Hello and welcome to our first episode of Photoshop for Beginners. In this first tutorial we will be learning the basics of Photoshop, we'll be learning about its layout, um, understanding a few of the different tools and understanding what layers are and by the end of this tutorial hopefully you'll have edited a photo to make it look like it's uh, a zombie portrait photo. So let's get stuck straight in. The first thing about Photoshop is Photoshop is a raster graphics editor. That means we use it to create images that we can display on a computer screen, a TV screen, or that we can print. Um, the first thing we need to do is be able to open up an image within Photoshop. So I've already taken a photo earlier on that I'm going to use today um, as my portrait. So to do this I'm going to go to File and I'm going to click Open. And once I'm there I'm just going to navigate through the folder options to find where I saved my photo. And there it is. And I click Open and that should open up now. Okay. Right, once we've got our photo open in Photoshop, we can start to look at the layout a little bit more. We've obviously got our, our photo or our image open in its little window in the centre. On the left hand side here, we've got our toolbar. We can use all of these different tools to edit or manipulate our photo in some way. Up above, we've got our, our file edit menus and, and all of that. And on the right hand side, we've got our navigator using this groovy little slider tool. I can zoom in on my photo. And using the red box, I can move it around. There we go. So I can zoom in and, and place my place where I'm going to edit. There we go. That's a bit better. Down the bottom here we've got the layers section. Photoshop works on layers. And basically these are edited by stacking them one on top of the other. At the minute we've got layer zero, which is our, our only layer. And that's the photo as it's opened up. And to add a new layer, we go to layer, new, and add a new layer. And every time we're going to edit our, our image or add a new, a new part to it, we're going to add a new layer. So, first things first, if we select layer 0, which is our, our actual photograph, and go to image, we're going to adjust it slightly. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the tone, contrast and colour of the picture. Now at the moment, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see the picture looks a little bit kind of orangey, a little bit greeny. That's because I've taken it on my mobile phone's camera, and that's not a great camera, so it's not giving me the best quality image. So I'm just going to use Photoshop's automatic features to try and improve the colour and tone and contrast. So if I go to Image, Auto Tone, there we go, and Auto Contrast, and finally Auto Colour. There we go, and that's fixed that. Bring stuff. Right, I'm going to zoom back in, and I'm going to resize my window by using a little down in the bottom corner. I'm going to drag that out a little bit. There we go. Right, the first tool we're going to look at in Photoshop is going to be the Clone Stamp tool. The Clone Stamp tool works by taking part of an image and copying it or cloning it over onto another part of your image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another image and we're going to clone things out of there and put them into uh, our zombie photo. So I'm going to go to open and I've saved on my computer on the desktop a couple of images. Uh, and let's start with the muscles one. There we go. Now that's opened up as a tab within there, it might open up as a whole separate image for you. If not, drag it over and then resize it using the navigator so that it's manageable within your workspace. There we go. Now, the clone stamp tool is on the left hand side in the toolbar. If we go down, it looks a little bit like a, a, a stamp. There we go. And we can see it says clone stamp tool. This works by selecting an area of an image. Uh, if I hold down the Alt key, you see it goes to a little crosshair and left click. And once we've selected our reference point, which we've just done by Alt clicking, we then go over to our, our zombie photo, go on to layer one, which is our empty layer, or add a new empty layer if you haven't already got an empty one. And we can then start to brush on our image. There we go. Fantastic. There's a couple of things to look at with the, the clone stamp tool. When we've got it selected, we can change how big the uh, the stamp is. So at the minute I've got it set to 158 pixels. If I move it all the way up to 1000, we see it gets a lot bigger. And if I move it to smaller, we see it gets a lot smaller. So depending on how minute and detailed you want your, your image editing to be, you can select the appropriate size. We can also change the opacity, that's how see-through the stamp is. At the minute I've got my opacity set to 
which means that it's very, very see-through, which means that I can layer things up slowly. If I was to put it all the way to 100%, we'd see that when I click, there you go, it's not see-through, it's much more vivid, the effect we create there. And it might be that that is something you want to do, it might not be. We can also change the flow, so how quickly or how slowly that comes out. There we go. You see there, I put my flow right down, and it's taken a lot more time to, to come out. There we go. So that's the clone stamp tool. The next tool we're going to have a look at is going to be the paintbrush tool. This can be selected by this little brush icon on the toolbox over here. If we select the brush tool, there's lots of different options we can use the brush tool. We can change the nib, so that's the point, so what it draws by selecting these different options here. We can change the size once again by using this slider bar up the top. If I have a look, we can see that's how that's going to look at the minute. If I select a star one, we can see that we can draw around stars. Not that we'd want to on our zombie, but it might be something that you want to use in one of your projects. So there's lots of different nibs and effects that we can use to brush on. If I just have a quick quick go, I'm going to make a new layer here just to show you guys and then I'll delete it. Just a couple of different brush nibs. There we go. And there's our, our first brush nib. If we change that, let's go for the star. There we go, everyone loves the star one. There you go. It's like a glam punk rock zombie. So, the same as with the clone stamp tool, we can also change the opacity, so how see-through it is. So I'll do the same star now, but at 23% opacity. And you see it's much more see-through. And likewise with the flow. Flow at 100% like that. And if we move the flow down zero, same. There we go. So I can see lots of different options. Now, I've just drawn all, all over that layer, but I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that layer. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose delete layer. And there we go. We've deleted all that off. Fantastic. So we've our brush tool selected. Let's find a good, a good nib. And we're going to draw some, some blood on here. So I'm going to turn the opacity down and I'm going to set the colour to a nice kind of vivid blood red. There we go. And I'm going to make a new layer because every time we do something new in Photoshop we add a new layer. It makes it manageable. makes it easy to go back and edit. And oh, let's turn that flow back up. There we go. And we can start to add a little bit more detail. I'm going to make some nice deep eye bags, like I've been at work all day speaking to people and then I've had to come home and do more work. There we go. This is my default kind of Friday night face, if anyone was wondering. And now I'm going to go back into the brush settings and this time I'm going to select this very soft edge brush. And I'm going to make it a nice green colour. And we're going to paint on a bit of a sick pallor to my skin here. So I'm going to make a new layer again. And I've got my green colour down here. I've selected my brush tip up here to be 200 pixels. Yeah, that looks about right. Quite big. And I'm going to set my opacity to... I'll set this to about 37%, so it's kind of see-through. And I'm going to start to paint on my green-looking sick skin. Okay, lovely. And there we go. Now, what I'm going to do now is using layers blending mode, I'm going to try and get that so that, because at the minute it looks like my whole face has just got one of those kind of face masks on that you might wear if you want it to be more beautiful. But I want to be able to see all the details and shadows. So, in layers, you'll see that it says normal and there's a little drop down menu. This is what we call the layers blending mode. At the minute it's just a normal layer, but what we want it to do is we want to set it to a darken. And what this means is that any darker areas on the layer beneath will come through all the colouring we've got. So if we click darkening, you'll see that now suddenly we can see all of those details back, but I've still got that kind of green hint to my skin. We could also try multiply and colour burn, and we'll see all the different effects that that adds to me. Yeah, there we go. I like colour burn. We'll stick with that. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the clone st stamp tool to replace one of my eyeballs. Because uh, every good zombie should only have one eye. So I'm going to 
open up an image that we're going to use um, for the inside of my eyeball and that's going to be my goulash image lovely so once again we're going to drag that across and we're just going to use the clone stamp tool once again uh, so we hold down alt to select where we want to to copy the picture give it a left click go back into our image and we're going to zoom right in on the eye because we want to get nice and detailed for this one and once again we're going to make a nice new layer now we only want to edit where the eye is for this one we don't want to go over the outside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and select just the eye area and when I've selected just the eye area I'll only be able to edit in that and I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool which is over here in the toolbar and this works by selecting all the similar coloured pixels along the path that you're moving your mouse so I've left clicked and then I'm starting to move my mouse and the computer is trying to work out what it is that I'm trying to select so it's going okay so you want all these white bits so I've got to the corner and I've left clicked again and I can left click as many times as one and add a point in and then if I hover my mouse over the first point you'll see that it goes to a little round icon left click now I've selected just that area now if I go back into clone stamp when I start to paint this in it will only clone stamp within that dotted line so inside where my eye is so I'm going to start to do that now at the minute I've got the the flow set really low so let's turn that flow right the way up there we go lovely to deselect we go up to select and deselect and this means that we can edit the rest of our image now now it's a little bit harsh the lines around there so what I want to do is I want to blur that a little to do that I'm going to use the blur tool which is this little kind of teardrop looking icon on the toolbar I'm going to say blur tool I'm going to select that I'm going to select the size of the brush to make it a bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing there we go and the strength's on 50 I'm going to move it up ever so slightly and I'm just going to hold down around the edges of that goulash that goulash eye just to soften the pixels so that it blends in a bit more nicely with the image below there we go and if we zoom out hey there we go looking good looking good a little bit zombified and that might have a little play with there there we go with the blender modes that's looking good fantastic so what I want you guys to do is open up Photoshop have a little go with the uh, the images I've given you and try and make me into a zombie and when you've done that I want you to use the images that we took last week in our photography lesson and try and make yourself into a scary zombie you might want to add a few more creative flourishes so you could use the paintbrush tool for example with some of the more different brushes down here to add in some scrapes or scratches or you know a bit of damage to your zombie so I'll just quickly have a little go at that but basically be as creative as you can and try and make some interesting stuff for me guys oh that looked hideous let's get rid of that there we go ended up doing kind of a pink colour there and I didn't really want to do that there we go so add a little bit more gore an attractive look brilliant stuff so log on to moodle download the reference images and best of luck guys and i look forward to seeing what you've created